four beautiful staves here. It still have the bark on it. And it's, <laughs> it's late April right now, so this bark will just peel right off. Right. And uh, the pretty staves. Yeah. And we'll once we get the bark off, we'll go ahead and shape it up, thin it down, and, and get ready to put it on the pit. We just go work this one. I think we're just gonna go with this one right, right here. Right. Um, nothing okay. wrong with this one. They're both no. both beautiful. Fine, but, yeah. Uh, I don't put my hand on this one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's pure water. That's yeah. Yeah. It's just it's just as wet as it can be. See the water come off on my hand. The back of that still wet, slimy. Smells good though. Ready for the pit. Keith is getting out all the charcoal so it doesn't smother our new coals when we light them up here. It's been cooking now, drying actually, not fire hardened, but it's been drying four hours and 15 minutes. And you see, I'm holding my hand there and I gotta move it, it's that hot. So uh, I think another 15 or 20 minutes and we're gonna start dropping this thing down. Uh, she was um, steaming a little bit And the steaming on the end has quit. The steam was coming out the end here. And now that's stopped. Let me see. There's still moisture on my finger. So there's still a little bit of moisture being pushed out. Right now we've got it dried. We're about four and a half hours into the process. It looks like it's mostly dried. And we just dropped it down to start introducing the fire hardening process. And hopefully within another 30, 45 minutes, we'll be done with it and have it fire hard. And uh, at that point, we'll let it cool for about an hour and start tilling.
the yeah. end of this one. Yeah. yeah. I don't think it looks bad at all. We were both getting fairly tired at this point, and I forgot to film the fine tune scraping on the belly. But anyway, we got it done. <laughs> we cut that tree this morning. Yep. You, you just shot a four inch group with it at 15 yards, first round out of it. With arrows that ain't matched to it. And it looks like it fits you pretty good. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, I tell you, this was a living tree. We cut it at 8.30. We brung it in, split it, worked it down, and got it flexing. We got as even as possible. Yeah. And then we put it on the form, put it over the fire, sopping wet and green. Then what? Uh, put it, we, we put it over the coals and dried it, fire hardened it, and... Now we're shooting it. We took it, we let it cool for one hour, took it off and started tilling it and now we're shooting it and it's been less than 12 hours. It's 7.57 right now. Right, we started at 8.30. 8.30. And the moisture meter will not pick up a reading on the belly. And it's probably what, six About on the six back? Six and a half on the back. Six and a half on the back. And when we unstring this thing, I mean, it jumps backwards completely reflexed. These arrows we shoot out of it are way too heavy. This is what, maybe 45, 46 pounds? Yeah, about 520 grain arrows. And you know, yeah. they're a little, little it's, heavy. it's more than 10 grains per pound of bow, but they're shooting pretty hard out of it. Yeah, uh, I mean, this is, I mean, I hate to say it, this, kind of makes things that was written, you know, in books, that's obsolete. There's no checks. No checks, no cracks. No cracks, nothing. And it was a living tree. And in fact, we did leave it a, a, an inch or two long on each end right. in case we had a crack in the end, but there right. was none. There was none, that's right. So, yeah, uh, that's absolutely, why. Absolutely none. It's completely smooth, a joy to shoot. And a couple of times we actually saw steam coming out the end <laughs> and nope. still didn't get a crack. Yeah, it was blowing steam out of the ends. Unstring it, Keith, and let's look at the reflex. God. And Unbelievable. You, and you got to realize this thing's been hanging on a tillering tree for about three hours. It, we, I mean, we just finished tilling it. And look at... Look at the back set in this thing. I mean, the profile there tells you this is a, a, oh, yeah. a powerful bow. Right, right. I mean, really sweet shooter. I don't know what to say, man. I just, I know how I feel thinking about years ago, letting wood dry forever. There's no checks, there's no cracks, there's nothing. And you see how this thing took heat. I mean, it's not refined. We, I mean, we can sand this thing up and make it real pretty, and you could, you could tweak it. And... No, we just got through rough tilling it. Right. You know, it's not, right. it's not, a, it's not finished yet. And the deal was, Keith, it's not really to outdo anybody making a bow fast. Mm -hmm. We just wanted to show everybody what is possible with a wonderful bow wood like hickory, hickory. that you can 
take it from a living tree to a fire hardened bow in less than 12 hours and have a fine shooting weapon. That's just amazing. And then, you know, it might be another wood or two you can do this with. Yeah. I don't know, but yeah. it just... There's no problems with this bow. It's perfect. I mean, it's... I would tweak it a little bit round the handle, you know, all the oh, little yeah. cosmetics and things that make it a little more center shot. But this, I mean, people said this couldn't be done. No way can you take that living tree right there and transform it into a hard shooting bow, an accurate hard shooting bow with no cracks, no checks, no blemishes of any nothing kind in 12, less, than, less 12. than 12 hours. But we proved it. This is it. Hickory is amazing wood. And don't that speak volumes for what the Eastern Indians, they relied on hickory pretty much. I think it, that from, was from everything that we know of, including the bows, the old bows in the museums, everything that's written, hickory seemed to be their go-to wood. Right. And now we can really understand why. why. Yeah because there's things that's going on here that we, we didn't know yesterday, less than 12 hours. Less than 12 hours. And the three, you know, the th we did the three day bow and you know, at the end of that YouTube, I said I could probably do it in 24 hours, but it's based on things I learned from doing the three day bow. Right, right, right. Well, after thinking about it a little bit, we just went, you know, you and I said, let's just go for it. Yeah. Let's just see. What can be let's done. Let's just push it as hard as we can push it. And you know we we could probably do this in 12 hours. Well, we it, it was almost to the minute. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And we pushed just it. under 12 hours. So yeah, uh, we pushed it as hard as it can be pushed. I don't think it can be done any faster. And I think there's only a few woods out there that can take this kind of. I mean, elm, I, hickory. Yeah, I, I wouldn't think it could be only but a few. Right. Uh, That's the form we cooked it on. And it's been hanging on the tailoring tree all afternoon just about being strained and stretched and we just took the string off about 15 minutes ago and as of right now the limb tips are within a half inch back to the form and that's a half a day tillering just about and that's all that this bow has changed from from the form right there i tell you i i, I didn't think it was possible but we did it it's just amazes me. As you can see, I wish it was a little bit lighter, but you can see there's no checks or cracks in this thing. And we just threw a string on it, started shooting it. But it's perfect. <laughs> Keith, you got a good hunting weapon. <laughs> And uh, I, want, I want to say something, you know, if y'all like us to keep continue to do these things, uh, we got a few more things we'd be interested in, but y'all, if y'all would give, give Thad a, a, a big thumbs up and hit, hit the like button for him because uh, he, he, he goes the extra mile to do this, do, do these things and uh, all that'll help him a good bit, if you would. And do us both a favor if you're interested in learning about this. Check out the art and science of the file hardened bow at shannonoutdoors.com. And learn the science of what's going on. There's a lot going on here. You, you know, you, you just do file hardening and you don't really know what's going on. Uh, you really need a good thorough understanding of the dynamics of what's really happening to the wood. Yeah, this it's amazing. And when you introduced me to this concept two years ago, I mean, it was genius. But you said that, I'm, historically, I'm, I don't think I'm the first guy that ever did this, but you have reinvented the wheel again. To me, to be able to do this in one day is amazing. I mean, I just can't get over it. Well, we learn in every day. Every day. And you know, when we finished the video, we said we've got a lot more to learn yeah. in the video, right at the end. This is part of it, and this is not the end. No, this is not the end. There's more to learn. And there's a lot of guys out there experimenting with this now. And oh, thumbs yeah. up. I heard there's one fellow sent me a note and he said he's doing this with board bows. Now, granted, they got to be perfect, perfect. But a board bow has to be a perfect grain. But 
Keith, I want you to make a bow out of this two by four <laughs> form. It's been fire hardened about a hundred times. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, this is cool, guys. And uh, go to shannonoutdoors.com, go to buckhamoutdoors.com, and check out the video, check out the information, and uh, subscribe and like my channel. We'll see y'all next time.